The last thing we want to do in section 11.1 .1 is determine the sample size necessary for estimating the difference between two population proportions within a specified margin of error. The key in all of that is sample size, when you want to compute sample size. Now if you remember on the front front page of your inferential statistics cheat sheet right here, you have these two right here. So this is what you're learning. Now we've already learned this one and this one and this one. Those were from chapter nine. So when you want to know how many people do I need to call up to find out about the president's approval rating, if you have an old president's approval rating, this is what you'd use. If you don't have any president's approval rating, this is what you'd use. How many people do I need to put a thermometer in to find the average body temperature? That's this one. So this one means these two are proportions. Now we're going to work on what if I want to know the difference between men and women? What if I want to know the difference between um, African Americans and Latinos? What if I want to know the difference between you know one group and another group? And I want to call them up and ask them, then I'm going to use one of these two formulas. The one on the left, which is the first one on our page, is if you have prior estimates. See that right there? So if you have some old data set, some old study, some old something or other, where you have prior information always of course round up we wouldn't have it any other way and then if you have no clue no prior estimate you've never done this before you've never called people up and asked them these questions before then you're going to use the bottom one all right both formulas of course must be rounded up which is the same as in chapter nine the margin of error must be a decimal because you're working with proportions here so you better have decimals and both populations must be normally distributed or their sample sizes That shouldn't be there. That's just silly. That was a typo on my part. I'm sorry. That'll be gone for next semester. Okay. Suppose a medical researcher wants to know if there is a significant difference in heart attack rates between those who take placebo each day and those who take aspirin each day. So what sample size should be obtained if she wishes to be within three percentage points with 95% confidence? Assuming that... She used the results of an old study where it was found that the proportion of um, who had a heart attack while taking a daily placebo was 0 0.017 and daily aspirin was 0 0.009. Well, there's your old um, information right there. You've got a prior estimate. So you are doing this formula up on the top. All right, so let's see here. What a mess. I'm going to make this so it can all fit on the screen. All right, so we have P1 hat times 1 minus P1 hat P plus P2 hat times 1 minus P2 hat. And since in the problem they tell us P1 hat is 0 0.017, P2 hat is 0 0.009, that makes those two numbers kind of obvious. So let me pull those up, right? So right there. Then we still got to figure out the Z and the error. So let's see, did they give us a within somewhere? Oh, there it is, within three percentage points. See that right there? That's your error. So let me make another one here. Error equals three percentage points, which is 0 0.03. Always have to turn it into a decimal. You can't leave it as a whole number like that. So if that's the case, then for this one, we know this is 0 0.03 down here. All right, then the Z is based off of your confidence level. Here. So confidence level was, let's see here, 95%. Oh, okay. So if it's 95%, your Z is going to be 1.96. We all know that, but just a reminder, oh, I'll, I'll just remind you because it's been a while since we've had to find that. There we have it. Our confidence level is 95. That means that our alpha is 0.05 because they're complements of each other. That means alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. And then you can find the 1.96 either by using inverse norm so inverse norm 0 0.025 and 0 and 1 for your mean and alternate or and standard deviation because of course negative 1.96 or remember you have your t table let me grab that here it is and then in the bottom row is the z's so you go to the column 0 0.025 and you go to the very very bottom and you can see that it's 1.96 right there oh wrong sheet Okay, great. So that's 1.96. So now we're going to have to type all that into a calculator. Now the easier part to do is actually the front. So we'll do that front part kind of on its own. 
So let's figure what that is. So I'm going to grab a calculator. I'm going to move this kind of over to the side so you can still see it, but I need to leave room for my calculator here. Okay, so I want 0 0.017 times 1 minus 0 0.017 plus 0 0.009 times 1 minus 0 0.009 and end up with 0 0.02563, 0 0.02563. Okay, so there's that part. And then the back half, I'm just going to leave it alone for right now. All right, so now I'm going to multiply that by parentheses 1.96 divided by 0 0.03, close my parentheses, squared and I get 109.4. And since we must round up, no matter what, this is 110, 110. And there we have it. All right, now what if she doesn't have any prior estimates? Well, that makes the formula considerably easier because you just have the 0.5 in there. Now be careful, notice this is not 0.25. That's what it was for um, this one right here. This one is a 0.25 because it's for a single. But when it's two um, proportions, so this is a single sample or a single, single population proportion, this is two sample population proportion, two populations. So you gotta be careful. Single population, single sample here, two samples, two population here. Okay, so 0.5, but this isn't going to change. This is still 1.96, and this is still 0 0.03. So I'm going to take the answer I just had. So I'm going to take 0 0.5 times 1.96 divided by 0 0.03, close my parentheses, and square it. Enter. And I hit a huge number, because if you don't know anything about your data set, you're going to need a lot more people. right? And that's what we just learned. If you have an old study, it makes it easier. If you don't have an old study, you're going to have to go get a lot of people. Better make a note of that. There we go. And just to make this clear, you'll notice that when I when I found the 110, what I meant there was, I mean 110 of each type because it's N1 and N2. So you're going to need 110 aspirin patients and 110 placebo patients. And of course, they'll always have to be random. Otherwise, you're in big trouble anyway. When you have no prior estimate, you need so many more people. So you need 2,135 aspirin patients and 2,135 random placebo patients. This is why you'll hear sometimes if you pay attention to drug testing for you know big pharmaceutical companies, they'll talk about doing a, a trial run. Like um, they'll do a small sample trial just to see if there's like a proof of concept, quote unquote. You know, does this even remotely work with just a few people? Because if it's not going to work with a few people, then we're not going to bother testing it with a huge amount of group because this would cost the company lots of money to get that many people. All right, we're all done with section 11.1.